this is an argument I have so often with people who are trapped in, in the wrong mindset, right? I don't even know what the right psychological term is because I don't live in a world of academic psychology. But there are people who believe that they don't have a choice. And in the United States, for example, we have 50 states. There are some people in the state of Florida who feel like they can't leave the state of Florida. Because? They, they think it's because they don't have enough money. They think it's because it's, it's, uh, the drive is too far. There isn't a support network on the other side. The bureaucratic hurdles of trying to change your residency and get a new driver's license is too much. The taxes are too high to pay to move from a non-state, a non-tax state to a state tax state. So they all have reasons and the reasons are grounded in fact, but the value that they put on the fact, the, the value of the challenge is greater than the value of the reward in their point of view, in their perspective. And in reality, it's the other way around. You, um, you just reminded me of a video that changed my life. I'm going to play this video for you, okay? Um, it's a very, very short video. But when you talked about people living in a state or living in a situation where they don't think they can leave, this video came to mind. Um, oh. They just get an ant, and you can do this with basically any small creature, and you get a biro or a pen and just draw a circle around it, and it will, not, it will not leave the, the circle. And I watched this video many years ago of just this ant trapped in the circle, and they, the guy drawing the circle around the ant just makes the circle smaller and smaller and smaller. Oh, okay, so it left there. And it will basically remain trapped. And it was in a, when I watched huh. it, I thought, you know, I'm doing that for myself in my own life. So the ant remains trapped. They make it smaller. The ant won't um, leave the circle. But what's interesting here, right, is the ant is eventually figuring out yeah. that the that it's just a circle, that it's just a circle, that it's like just a shed. And when I saw that, the first thing I asked myself was, in what ways have I drawn an imaginary circle around myself? I think the more important question is oftentimes. When did the imaginary circle start? Who drew the first circle? Because it wasn't you. If you've ever seen a child, if you've ever seen an infant, a toddler, they are limitless. They, they know no bounds. They, they don't understand anything about the world around them. They, they don't know how their body feels, so they don't know whether they're hungry or whether they're gassy or whether they're urinating. They cry at everything and they're constantly squirming. They have no context. So all the context that they gain, they gain through absorption. We create the context for them. We create the idea of this is bedtime. We create the idea of this is what a healthy habit is, brushing your teeth, washing your hands, whatever else. We create this is home, and this is where you can walk around openly. But once you go out this door into the front yard, the front yard is not home anymore. And now you can't, you can't go anywhere you want. You have to stay here. So Somewhere, somebody started drawing circles before we ever drew them. All we started doing was then believing that the circles were more permanent than they really were.